Folks, Engineer 775 here. I am at the Intersolar Conference out in San Francisco with two of my favorite solar buddies. We got Jason Andrade and we got Johnny Valentine, which you know Johnny from my videos, but Jason is uh, West Coast Sustainables. You gotta check out he's his channel. Master. Go to Jason Andrade. He's helped us on so many systems. He he's been he's way ahead of us. I hate to admit it how far ahead of us he he's is. In California, so they're from the future anyway. They're from the future. <laughs> But uh, do me a favor and go check out Jason's channel and go back to Johnny's channel, Gain Solar Services, and please subscribe to these guys. We'll explain the whole AE catalog to you. And remember, uh, folks, we've done it before Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to have a lot of fun. We're going to go um, just we're hanging out for three days and taking in um, the sights of San Fran in this conference. So we're looking with forward. Elon, Elon's here. Elon Musk is here. We're just hanging out and uh, telling him how to do the Tesla battery we're right. See what it's like to go through inner solar when you're 775. Yeah, you're 775. It's a big burly man behind the camera. <laughs> All right. Subscribe to these guys' channel. Would you do me a favor? Appreciate it. Thank you. We're on the second floor now, looking at batteries. We're at the Rolls booth right now, Rolls Battery Engineering. And uh, these guys are geeking out on batteries. Which battery's better? My battery's bigger than your battery. We're just talking and, uh, batteries here. Just talking batteries. Look for how this. strong. This is what, why Jason Andrade is such an explosive solar installer. Go ahead and just show him a power lift on this, this T12 250. Now, this is a heavy battery, folks. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's, look at that. That's like a 200 pound battery. See, that's why that that's why he's such a, he's a one man solar show, folks. <laughs> Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing the clean jerks on the two volt. Okay, I'm at Inter Solar. I'm on the floor with all those storage systems, and I'm looking at the Aquion battery. These things are awesome. They have little MC4s. You can basically network these things together. And I'm trying to find a good application. And the chiller video that you might have seen is a perfect application for these salt water batteries. So I'm looking for a video on these in the near future. Another treasure here at the show, the Stiebel Eltron. This is the new heat pump water heater. It's not a hybrid. It's got a cutaway on it, so you can see that it does have a backup element. The beauty of this machine, I don't know if you can see it in here, is the compressor. This baby only runs 500 watts, and it's, so you can crank up the temperature like to you know 140 plus degrees, and then uh, you use a mixing valve, and so you can do all your water heating with a hybrid. Stevel Eltron water heater, heat pump water heater. And where I live in South Carolina, it's great because it's gonna take the hot, humid air, it's gonna dehumidify, take all that heat and turn it into hot water. 
So this is the most impressive. I don't know what the compressor is yet. I don't. I, it's a standard. It's not an inverter compressor, but that's okay. It's only around 500 watts. So this is not a hybrid. It's a heat pump water heater. It's got the ETL certification. And, uh, so we're. This is the latest grace. I know I've used the Geyser ROs. Same technology, but. Uh, Steve Eltron is like is like the Cadillac of heat pump water heaters. Up on the third floor now. The third floor is all racking, TV racking of all sorts. So we're gonna go check out. Oh, this stinks! I gotta leave. I've had so much fun at Intersolar, but it's only day two. I got one more day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. So anyway, it's been a good day, and we gotta wrap up day two. Johnny's gotta go home. Johnny does have to go home tomorrow. That's a bummer. But I get to hang out with Jason Andrade for another day. So we're going to have fun tomorrow. And we're going to Battle of the Bands. And we got Cruiser. passes to the Battle of the Solar Bands. The Solar Battle of the Bands. He's be sure to hit all his secret install tips with me. These DJI drones are awesome. Um, this booth was set up with thermal imaging. You can see on the screen. Everybody walking around is picking up thermal imaging. This is good for finding uh, hot spots and failure modes and solar panels on your roof but these things keep getting much better the cameras are awesome this one has articulating arms the arms of we'll see will come down um, for landing but they go up so that you have a full clear view of the camera on its gimbal it can so here's the arms coming down so that it can land safely and not destroy the camera so this guy's been flying this thing for three days so he kind of does it with his eyes closed he's really good uh, <laughs> but they're very stable so we're looking at these not necessarily from the thermal imaging, but possibly in conjunction with doing some security. Uh, can you imagine having one of these? They got about a 25-minute time, and you can basically um, plot a uh, perimeter and let the thing go on camera. There's Jason. We're up on the third floor. Not even happening. Just having a fun time looking at. Uh, all different types of racking and ways to mount solar panels. And uh, I'm going to do some Iron Ridge. I've, I've always seen them. They're very simple. And I know Jason Andrade at West Coast Sustainable has been using a long time. A lot of times I do top of pole mounts and then I switch up to a ground mount. But the, I need something in between. And it looks like uh, you know, the Iron Ridge is probably the easiest. Just using regular pipe, 2 inch and 3 inch. And then you have these... Uh, couplers and clamps and you can adjust your angle and they got a configurator that pretty much makes sure you do your concrete your foundation bases right you can mount these on a roof too but anyway this is uh, something i want to do for uh, some of the bigger solar water pumping projects i have they got all sorts of cool fasteners now i really like these um they're watching these guys demonstrate how they work I'm David with Iron Ridge. Uh, this is our new universal fastening object, or UFO for short. As you can see, it has a nut, a clamp head, and a barrel bolt all integrated together. What that allows you to do is just place it in the rail, spin it down, land it in the module. It's automatically bonding that module in place. It has internal lubrication, so it can spin as fast as you can make it go. It's called the Universal Fastening Object because it has a height range of 30 to 48 millimeters, which works with any module frame. As well, that mid clamp that I just installed can also turn into an end clamp with a stopper sleeve, just like that. Let me give it a shot. One more time for the other end clamp. Okay. That's nice neat end clamp. The job is done. That's great. All right, David, I really appreciate you showing me how to do that. Thanks for coming by. All right, I'm here with uh, Jeff over at Snap and Rack, and he's doing a demonstration of uh, their components. Sure. So this is a new innovation for the show. We just added a simple spring to the mid clamp. Um, as you can see, all of the Snap and Rack. This is why we call it Snap and Rack. Product snaps into place. Advantages here are you don't have to slide clamps in from the end. T bolts and all that kind of stuff. As you're laying mods, you can go right down the line, have a bag of them on your belt, snap them into place. 
Um, the advantage of the spring is kind of self-explanatory, but it's a good innovation because now, instead of having two guys putting mods down, you can have one down and just drums it down with the How long has the spring been out? We just, we just came and we just did. For the show? For the, for show. the show. For the show. So the springs will start showing. I mean, we're, we just ordered a million springs. So just holding the clamp so you just want another extra set of hands for you. So, yeah, because in the past, without the clamp, Falling down. it was down. So somebody would have to pull it up, slide the yeah. mod in. So now you don't have to do that. Nice. Um, we also, with, as part of our wire management, we have these in lieu of a um, of a zip tie, which zip ties also in weather will they have a limited lifespan right. also. So we came up with this uh, wire clamp, and what what this does is it, it replaces that. It fits our profile, so you can now trap the wires down. Because in Great. our channel we have a set of zip ties around. Set of zip ties. You know, we have customers in, in Arizona and Nevada, places like that where it's really, really it's extremely hot. Zip ties have a life of about a year. Okay. So um, and again, you know, here's our here's our uh, end clamp. Um, everything snaps into place and it's still it really is amazing. Um, Talk to me about some of your root. All right, go keep going. You got some oh, that's fine. wire management. Wire man so the other part of the wire management too is your home run cables and your trunk cables. If you're doing um, invert micro inverters or inverters, you have the ability now to capture these wires and the just keep them from sagging. Just keep them sagging because the inspection process is a lot of inspectors. If they see wires dangling, they're going to they're not going to pass you. Right. Yeah, they're not going to pass you. So. Um, the wire management's big for us. We've always had the deep channels for for the wire management, but now having being able to trap the wires and, and manage them properly is uh, something we're very proud of. Um, also, uh, our com uh, we have came up with a junction box. Now it's a 4x box. This is just an example of how it can be used. Right. We ship it without it being drilled at all. You can do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. So it comes it comes with this, and it also has the bolt and the nut that traps it in our our. Uh, you can. Uh, Tighten it down and snap it right in. It snaps in, and then you can tighten it with the uh, with the nut. Um, half inch on everything. Everything half inch socket takes care of everything with our. What about our the nut? Uh, explain to me these roof bases. I really we use these. Yes. I really like those. The metal and roof base. Yes. Um, great part. We've, it's been out. Gosh, it's been out almost two years now. Um, so real simple to use. The nice thing about it is, is that we've got a gasket here, and there's no UV exposure. So there's no need for you to, to truly seal this unless you want to. Right. So the nut covers it. Exactly. So you go into the roof um, with your lag, you tighten it down, and then the second piece has the redundant um, washer in it as well. Right. Screw it on, and then it's as you sealed can see, there. and it's sealed there. And as you can see here, it comes with an L foot. Everything yep. from Snap and Rack comes assembled, so you're not assembling anything, um, and you go right to the. What do you mean it comes assembled? It's the, uh, when you with the rail, it's coming you, with. No, no, no. If you no. buy, if you buy any of these, if you yeah. buy any, this clamp, it comes with the L foot on. Um, all the, you don't get pieces that you have to assemble. Got it. Um, if you like, when you get, if you buy the comp roof um, package, yeah, you get this, all of this together. Got it. Assembly. The assembly and the, the roof flashing is it comes with it. It's a kit. It's, it's a kit. That's correct. Got it. Um, you know, even even this stuff, it comes assembled, so you don't know, putting pieces together. I'm guessing how it goes board. together. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, let's face it. That's, that's a labor shift. It you is. Guys in the, in the warehouse the night before getting ready for a job. Yeah. Um, now the metal roof space, we offer a lot of solutions. This now, what about the lag itself? Do you supply that, or is that a, is that a, it can get anything? You can get anywhere because you know lag. You don't supply those. We don't supply. Those. All right. No. All right. Um, we can. I mean, we can get them, but uh, the truth is that you can probably get them locally. You can get them at Home Depot, whatever. Yeah, okay. Pass all any place. Got it. Um, now, on the metal roof, we have other options also. This, this yeah, like is like an S5 type clamp. Yes, yeah. it's actually your, your. That's a that's a good analogy. So we we did the S. What we did with it is a little bit different. Look at this here for now. Um, so S5's got a fine clamp, and they use set screws. Yes. So one thing immediately is you got a second, at least one more tool. With us, everything sticks with the Still half, half inch. Now it's also a camber effect. So, so um, it's camming over. It's camming over, and the other thing it's doing too, and you can see it here as well. It's not penetrating the coating of the roof. And that's an important. It's piece. got more surface area. It's got more surface area, but the other piece of it too, and and because of the camber effect, when if you're in a trade wind or a high wind situation, it's lifting. It's actually tightening. 
Now, the other, the, the, and the third piece of it too is, is we're not breaking the coating on a, on a roof. Because you're so spread out. And uh, you don't yes, have that, you're not dimple. There's no dimple. Right. And if you if you break the coating on these, you can violate the warranty of the roof. For the home so you have how many different business. profiles can you handle? There's two. We have two um, that handle pretty much 85 percent of the uh, rolled roofs up there. But what about a standing seam that's got a taper? Um, it's got a taper to it, like the S5 that we use has a standing seam metal roof that has a taper to it. A little though. taper to it? Yeah. Yeah, we, I, I would have our application engineering team okay. look at that. All right. Um, we got a very robust application engineering team, too. So if you find something like that, bring it to us. Yeah, I wonder if Johnny has seen the spring yet. This Probably is, not. We just, we just put it out. Like, yeah. That's cool. And what... Oh, this is the universal line plant. So this is another, this is, uh, we're the only ones that have this. Um, it is a proprietary piece. It's one of the few things that doesn't snap into place. Now, what this does, and it's, I can, we can walk back over and we can, I'll show See you over it? there okay. as well. So what it does is you slide this in and the way it works, it's, and I'm dating myself, Scott, but it's, it reminds me of Pac-Man, right? Right. So what this does is um, you slide this in and we, we train people to keep the tape on. So you slide in about here, you got your mid here, you lay your mod down. Your module's flush right here. You lay the module down, so it comes from the inside. Here. You pull it, it picks up the inside of the module yeah. frame. You hit it with your half inch driver. It picks up the frame. Yeah. You tuck this in. And we always tell them tuck it in, don't tear it off, because if you ever have to service the array, you're going to need to use that tape to redo this. Really? Of course. What's the tape doing? The tape's just for just pulling puller. It back. Just to pull it back. That's it. Otherwise, you've got a screwdriver and you're okay. going to pull nine thing. You put this on here, uh, the end cap, and these end caps, by the way, are designed so that water actually does come out of these if it rains. Okay. Uh, two or three times a year. Ponding in there. Yeah, exactly. You guys get a lot of moisture. And so what you have is, if you can envision, and we'll go over there and you can shoot it on the other uh, okay. uh, display. You got your module frame right here. You got a nice clean look. Yep. So if you've got a customer, a uh, residential customer, yeah, you can I did see like their, the end clamps on that. Yeah, and, you, and if you, if, if from an aesthetic piece, it is nice. It's super clean, and that's what this does. And what, how is this? What is this doing? It's just holding it in one direction. It's not actually holding it from the outside. No, it isn't. It's clamping it from. The, so here, let's go. All right, let's go look at one. This, this is an application for it right here. So there's the end clamp. What it's doing is it's picking up this underside of the frame, much like. Oh. Got right it. There. I got. Okay. Got it. So, okay. So it's it's picking it's pulling, up. It's good. The, the lip on it. It's got it. The lip on it. Yeah. All right. And that's how that. Sweet. And then so and you get this nice clean finish. It is. You know, it looks I, nice. If black homeowner, on black. If a homeowner can see that from the street, then that's that's that really cool. nice. As opposed to having the traditional clamp like we have at the other end, which is showing. Right. Well, that's great. Jeff, I really appreciate you showing me no Snap and Rack. We've started using them, really like them. So I uh, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, we're closing down. All the exhibits are shutting down. I have um, had enough. <laughs> it's great, it's been a lot of fun. We are leaving San Fran and Intersolar, and we've learned a lot, picked up a lot of stuff and a lot of tricks, and uh, hopefully be sharing some of these on YouTube. So. All right, time to go home.